growing up. I knew I was different, I was darker. I actually didn't know what it meant to be an Indigenous person. I did see myself just like everybody else. It wasn't until high school where bullies, smart asses would call me names that I then went home and asked my mum, what does that mean, mum? And mum goes, well, you're Aboriginal. They're trying to tease you. What I want you to do is whenever they do that, you just keep walking away. My mum is full blood Indigenous. My dad is Irish, Scottish, but I've never really been seen as that white person. They've always just seen me as, you're that black kid. It's a struggle when you're young to be different. I remember when I was a boy, sitting in a bath and trying to rub the colour off my skin. My mother coming in and asking what I was doing and saying, I'm trying to rub this black off. I found out later that's a really common experience amongst a lot of Aboriginal kids who, are, who just want to fit in. Day, right? Mrs. Carmichael, when you came to the United States with your children, where did you live? We lived at Stebbins Avenue for a while. What kind of neighborhood was it? It was kind of a mixed neighborhood, but a little on the rundown side. What do you mean by the rundown side? Streets were dirty, garbage pails all thrown around and not covered and things like that. How big was the place you lived in? We had a three-room apartment there. And how many people live there? When my kids moved to the United States, we were still living there, my husband and I, so that made five children, because I had two there, the five that came with their aunt, my husband and I. How many is that all together? Five and three, eight. How, how in life in general for your children? Uh, I mean, could they... Uh do other things most children in the United States could do? I mean, did they have enough money to do those things? No, we didn't. Why didn't they? Because my husband didn't make enough money. Why didn't he make enough money? He was a carpenter, and he worked two weeks in, four weeks off. He drive taxi cab part of the time. But there were other carpenters who lived better than your husband. Of course. And why didn't your husband? Because he was laid off. He was always the first to be laid off. Why was he always the first to be laid off? Because he was Negro. He always said because he was a colored man, because naturally in Trinidad we used the word colored. We never used the word Negro. So he always said because he was a colored man. Thank you. The Lawrence Inquiry was the most profound and important inquiry to change the landscape for black and Asian people. It made us as a community look at ourselves as well. One of the unique things about it, it showed you the racism from the police, not just the racist frogs on the street, but all these things kind of came together. If it had been a white boy, they would, have, they would have surrounded a black community, they would have arrested as many black boys as they could, and they would not stop until they get the killer.
we are very used to this type of thing where life is regarded as cheap in South Africa. And, uh, but nevertheless, uh, it's a sense of disconcern that it should happen in a country like Britain. I'm afraid this report does identify uh, significant failings in the murder investigation proper. Those failings, unfortunately, were not uh, overcome uh, during the internal review. I don't want first aid discrimination because first aid discrimination is like giving me crutches after breaking my legs. Don't break my legs. <laughs> Dismantle institutional racism. I don't want you. I don't want you to lose your racism. Keep it if you need it. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. I mean, if you need to stand on my back to have some sort of statue, you have no dignity, no self-respect, no humanity. Keep it. Keep it. But don't ask me to give you racism awareness training. Right. I'm not into potty training for whites. Right. I can't wipe your asses. Right. I'm not interested in your soul. I don't care about whether a policeman is racist or an immigration officer is racist. Those things don't matter to me. I want the policeman punished if he's racist. I want the immigration officer's laws changed so that he doesn't examine my sister for her virginity when she comes into this country. I don't want the media and people to have racism awareness training courses. Right. I want to mount campaigns to stop the yellow press from mounting the lies that create the prejudice, that create the racism, that create the fascism that kills our people. To the mothers and the fathers, the brothers and the sisters, for the breaking up of families and communities, we say sorry. What do we want? Our children back. What do we want? Now. Kids are dying in care. Young girls are becoming pregnant in care. Their treatment of me was like as if um, I was nothing, basically, and that didn't sit well with me. You're told not to have any contact with your child. You're told not to support your child with their issues. So how do I fight this? With Tyson, something just sort of snapped. I didn't want to see my daughter suffer anymore. I decided no, I couldn't work for this organisation anymore. 
Australia is engaged in a new stolen generation. Aboriginal children are best cared for by Aboriginal people. Children do much better when they're in their own family and growing up in their own homes. Some kids probably do at times have to be removed from their parents, but they do not have to be removed from their whole family. Enough's enough. Give us our kids back. We need change now. I just could not believe that in this day and age, injustice could occur. Yeah, you don't believe it at the beginning, at the start. Oh, you're joking and all that, but um, yeah, when I got home, she's not, not there. They create so much pain and heartache. They need to be held accountable, not only for the crimes of the past, but the crimes of the present. I never thought I'd be doing this. <laughs> never thought I'd be involved in a national movement. Anything that could actually change people's perceptions. It's like you've got rose-coloured glasses on when you think everyone is equal. Let us do it again! Let Australia know that this is still happening. Enough, 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 enough. Enough was just enough. Two in a row, I reckon. The, um, the army are here to support the health department. The survey that we're doing there. And Centrelink must explain, they will now manage half of everyone's income through quarantining. If we were to go into government with concerns, it would be a set time and yeah. date and who was going to be there, what's expected. These men have all watched the news. They know the community employment program will be scrapped and they will lose their jobs. How are you all guys? Pushing them onto the dole is the only way Centrelink can manage half their income. I understand that you guys feel like it's just a blanket across everyone. Well, it is at the moment. And it is. Look, um, the welfare reforms have an emergency response trigger, um, and people living in prescribed communities will have 50% of their um, Centrelink benefits quarantined. Talking about welfare reforms, is it across the board? Yeah, I, I appreciate your concern. As the 50% income management is for a 12-month period as part of this emergency response. What they're looking at doing... My question to you again, is it going to be including white bad parents and yeah, good parents? Is. Yeah. Everyone across the board on Centrelink? Yeah, what they're looking at doing is um, introducing 100% income management for, for parents or families that, um, whose children are at risk of neglect, and that yep. will be rolled out across all of Australia. Yep. Um, so, I mean, that's definitely coming through. What The reason things are happening... So you start with Blackfellas first? Well, I think the reason it's happening so quickly in the Northern Territory is in response to the Little Children with Sacred report, and yep. that's why I think all of this has happened so quickly. You know, you're more going to attack white bad parents too, white people. Not only blackfellas, it's good and, good, good and bad in both worlds. That's right. You know, whatever happened to reconciliation?